Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we're at the cottage. Yes, we are. Yay, cottage time. Um, <clears throat> I, I thought today that we would talk about something that may be a sensitive subject for some. Uh, we call it the summer blockbuster. <laughs> um, yeah, so this first real summer blockbuster was way back in 1975 with Jaws. Um, and it set a precedent and people realized that in the summer people are more like like they you know we want a, a big exciting mm -hmm. meaty movie you know something usually an action and yeah. adventure something that you want to see on the big screen yeah. that's gonna draw people it's gonna be the hit of the summer so Jaws was pretty much the first one of the modern summer blockbuster and we have kept that up every year until There's quite a few movies <laughs> that have that tr that vie for number one yeah. in our summer blockbuster hearts. So the year after Jaws in 1976, it was The Omen, that very first. Now, mm. I mean, Jaws itself is kind of a scary a movie. Bit, so yeah. people were kind of thinking like, oh, okay, that's what people are into. Let's let's try towards this. By 1977, though, Star Wars came out, and here was an epic fantasy uh, yeah. you know my goodness um, hard to top that yes it is hard to top that let me tell you although I have to say Jaws continues to be a summer favorite um, there are all kinds of like drive-in movies but like pop-up drive-ins where they have them like on beaches so everybody is just floating in the water in oh, their inner awesome. tubes <laughs> while a big blow-up screen is showing Jaws and I mean it's creepy it's funny but I see that all over the place Jaws continues to delight people all summer long 1978 was Grease okay yeah yeah, yeah. so again that is a, a, a fun one that you can see would attract a lot of people 1979 another horror the Amityville horror Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. 1980, easy and to predict. That's right. 81, Raiders of the Raiders Lost, Lost Ark. Ark. Yeah. So you start to see commonalities here. We're, we're starting to figure out the kind of movie that people want to see in the summer. Yes. Um, let's see, 1982, E.T. Oh, E.T. E. was, yeah, e. of course. Um, so a lot of Spielberg here, really, Spielberg and... George Lucas. That's right. Uh, I mean... And then they got together and, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, let's see, 83, Return, Return of the, the Jedi. Jedi, 84, Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, yeah. 85, Back to the Future. Back to the Future. The, this list is kind of reading like Sean's favorite all-time yeah. movie list. Yeah, and it so is. that that is the person you are Absolutely. in your heart of hearts. You're a summer blockbuster guy. You yes. want to see those big marquees. Yes, I do. Yeah. 1986. Top Gun. Ah, uh, yeah. And so, for a while, we thought this might be the summer of Top Gun again. So I know you're still real yeah. sore about that. Oh, I am looking forward to <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Yes. Absolutely. 1987, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Two. That's right. I don't know how you even know that. Well, I knew Beverly Hills Cop was older than that. Okay. 1988, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, okay. Are we getting to like the era where you maybe where have seen actually, some of these in theaters? I saw Return of the Jedi in theaters. That was wow. a big one. Okay. Yeah, that was unusual, but I really, really mm -hmm. wanted to see oh, it. Oh, that's cute. 1989, Batman. Yes, that was a huge one. That was a big, big one. So this yeah. would have been the one where Jack Nicholson was the Joker. the Joker. Okay. That's right, Michael Keaton is of Batman. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's so, I mean, I want to re-watch some of these Tim Burton Batmans. And I know they're like a, a different beast from the ones that we are more familiar with today. But I think they're kind of great in their own way. They are kind of great in their mm -hmm. own way. They're just like, they're all weirdos. Which mm -hmm. is pretty uh, apt for mm -hmm. Batman. Yeah. Even Batman's messed up. But then, sure. who else? Uh, Joker, Penguin, mm -hmm. Catwoman. They're all... Mm -hmm. not normal people. They're all not normal. Which is probably why they started dressing up in costumes. <laughs> yes. 1990 was the Summer of Ghosts. Okay, yeah. Interesting, that one. That, that was, is that's, an interesting That's one. Um, an outlier a little yes, bit, to have something kind of romantic there. 1991, we're back 
in our Terminator time. Terminator oh, 2, yeah. Judgment Day, that's right. That was a huge one. Oh, Sean. Yeah. So, 92 was Batman Returns. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised it's uh, actually on your list because mm -hmm. it was kind of a disappointment. Oh, well, and perhaps it, it didn't do as well as the first Batman, yeah. but okay, people still, still well went enough. to see it. Yeah. yeah. 93. Jurassic Park. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. That's like, that's a classic. That is a blockbuster. classic. And again, a Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. 94 was The Lion King. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, there would have been lots vying for it, but Lion King was like a that roaring a success. Yeah. yeah. So, again, that's a bit of an outlier in terms of this. Um, and there often are, like Disney Pixar, they love to put out a summer movie, and they do do quite well. People do want to bring their families to see yes. movies. Um, but The Lion King was a movie that everyone saw, clearly, yeah. and lots of people saw more than once. Yeah. Um, Batman Forever makes the list in 95. <laughs> That's a horrible movie. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, um, 96. Independence Day. That is correct. Yeah, um, I remember that one. Yeah, that's that's huge, yeah. right? Like that to me again is is classic. It's classic, but it's sort of the modern one. Like yes. that is the template for most action movies <laughs> since. Yes, and none of them quite recapture that. No. But, uh, Ninety-seven Men in Black. Yeah. Okay. So we so have the Will back to Smith, back Will Smith. Yeah. Ninety-eight is kind of a weird one. I think again there are a lot of movies competing and, and very close, but Saving Private Ryan took it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. So I mean, that's, that's Spielberg, that's Spielberg, but like that's very serious. different from his normal yeah. blockbustery one. But it still is like quite an act. There are a it lot is. of action. You're scenes absolutely in that movie. right, and it it's a quality movie. Absolutely. So there's no uh, no regrets. surprise that yeah. that that people went out to see it. 99 Phantom Menace. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, not a good movie, but well, the legacy is. Yes. I mean, people, people had to go out in that. droves to see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2000 was the year of Mission Impossible 2. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Mission Impossible 1, I was not super impressed with. Number 2, they got John Woo in there, and mm -hmm. that was an action movie yes. first. Yeah. 2001 Shrek. Yeah, so again, so an another, movie, yeah, but a massive classic mm -hmm. animated movie. Yes. So it's there's those studios are starting to learn like this is a good family time. It's yeah. good to put out a family movie during this time. Yeah, well, and it's counter programming to the bigger, more adult action mm -hmm. blockbusters. Yeah. Um 2002 Spider-Man. Oh yeah. The Summer of Spider-Man. That was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember commercials for Spider-Man. I remember the they wanted to erase the Twin Towers from oh, that yeah, one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that is the first modern superhero movie, I would say. Mm -hmm. X-Men came before that in the 90s, and was, unlike Batman, actually was like the, the comic book and mm -hmm. was very cool. Mm -hmm. But Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire really took over that mantle and I think grew to what it is now. Okay. So um, in 2003, we had Finding Nemo. Yeah, so again, a Pixar movie and... Th it surprises me to. that that's that old. Like, I yeah. like, woo. It feels more recent than it that. It does. Um, 2004, Shrek 2. They went okay. back to the Shrek well yeah. and it, did, it performed once again. Yes, it did. Yeah. 2005 Spider Revenge of the Sith. Oh no, Revenge Sorry. of the Sith. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know. Um, 2006 was Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. That's a great movie. That one won the summer. Uh, and 2007 Spider-Man once again won the summer. Yeah, okay. And then 2008 The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, The Dark Knight 2008. Massive. 2009 Transformers. Yep. So that's Revenge of that. the Fallen. Yeah. Were you uh, waiting in line to see that one at midnight? Um, I think my midnight days were over at that <laughs> point. I think uh, Dark Knight is the last midnight showing that I've seen. Okay. Because they don't have them anymore. No, you know, they it's don't. Like 7 p.m. Now they come out the day, like now they come out 
Thursday evening. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of cheating. It is. <laughs> it's it's definitely cheating. <laughs> 2010 Toy Story 3. That's interesting. Yeah. But again, there is that template that we've established. <laughs> yeah, that does work. 2011 Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Okay. That ended up winning this summer. So that's almost... um right on the line it's almost a family movie it definitely appeals to younger viewers but it has you know the fantasy action element to it too yeah. so it's um yeah a real hybrid um 2012 the avengers oh, there we go that starts the domination right yeah it's surprising <laughs> like... <laughs> that that's the first mcu movie that we've had on this list mm -hmm. well i mean here's also uh, an element of controversy is what qualifies as a summer blockbuster? Is it something that came out in June, July, August? Usually now we have started opening them in May. And now... They're getting earlier and earlier. Even yeah. April we're seeing those yeah. big... I mean, Mulan was scheduled for March. Yeah. So what qualifies as summer? We don't have a Hard cutoff date. Um, so yeah, it's hard to say I exactly. I think if you're earlier than May... You probably shouldn't be considered summer. Okay. That's the kickoff. But that's pretty. Me. That's a, an arbitrary. A little bit, but maybe it's is not when the weather starts getting warm. Well, in our corner of the world. Yeah. That's <laughs> yes. what matters to me. Okay. <laughs> so 2013 was the summer of Iron Man 3. Okay. 2014, Guardians of the Galaxy. So now we've got a real Marvel. Mm -hmm. five going. A stronghold. But 2015 was Jurassic World. That was a huge movie. Yes, it was. Uh, so that's Chris Pratt two yeah. years in a row. And then Finding Dory hit in 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2017, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Wonder Woman won the summer. Deservedly 2018, so. Incredibles 2. Oh, okay. And 2019, the summer blockbuster of the year was Aladdin. Interesting. Aladdin, because Avengers Endgame came out in April, and by your yeah. okay, it doesn't count. <laughs> admission, yeah. that doesn't count. Yeah, uh, but certainly if you counted the ones released in April, it it, it made more than Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. Yes, well, Aladdin did do pretty well. It did, especially internationally. Okay. So, um. So those are all, I mean, it's hard to dispute any of those movies, but are there some that didn't make the list that surprise you? Yeah, Spider-Man 2. Okay. Um, also, the first Iron Man. Mm -hmm. I am surprised that that didn't sneak on there. I'm surprised we didn't have one out of the X-Men movies. Okay. In the 90s. Okay. Uh, but I, it's hard to argue with those movies. They all were big. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, out of those, just thinking about it, to me, like, I remembered Armageddon. I would have thought Armageddon w would be on the list. That's a good one, yeah. So Armageddon is 98, and what one was Saving Private Ryan. Okay. Yeah, Armageddon so, was more of a traditional summer blockbuster. Summer blockbuster, yeah. Um, also, The Sixth Sense. Remember how big that, like, that was almost a sleeper hit. It was, but, was but I would have thought that was of fall. That was the summer of Phantom of Menace. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. thought that came in the fall. I okay. do remember that being a big deal. Okay. How about um, Alien, 1979? Yeah. Uh, are you surprised? Because that was the year of Amityville Horror. Yeah, I would have. If you gave me those two, I would have picked Alien as okay. the, the bigger movie. Now, in 87, Robocop was, uh, you know, a close second, and it was Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, lots of cop movies that yeah. summer. Lots of weird cop movies. So does that one surprise you at all? It doesn't, or? because Robocop is a hard R. That was okay. an extremely okay. violent movie. So I would say that really cut into its audience. Fair enough. Um, the one, uh, 1994, okay, 1994 was the summer of Lion King, but it was also a very big summer thanks to Speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a big movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Bridesmaids in 2011. That was another one that um, just blew up at the box yes, office. It did. And, like, not that they didn't see it coming, but they didn't know it would be as big as it was. So that, again, like you said, rated R. It's harder to sell those movies, but it did very well. Yeah, and I think for that one 
That was more marketable than Robocop. Robocop's such a niche <laughs> Probably, film. Probably, yeah. Now I know um, 1988, Who Framed Roger Rabbit won it, but Die Hard would have been... Well, Die Hard lives on. Certainly your choice. Yeah, even um, at the time. Even though it seems like a Christmas movie, it was released in the summer. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, for me, 2015, Jurassic World won it. But Mad Max Fury Road to, yeah. uh, is not only a better movie, in my opinion, but it's, it's super memorable. I yeah. remember where where we saw it. Yeah. It was Lansdowne VIP. We saw it with all of our friends. Luke and Mel were sitting in front of us. My sister Jana was visiting from out of province. Right. She came with us. Yeah. We went out to dinner nearby afterwards to digest it. It was yeah. such a fantastic, oh, yeah, fun film that just uh, almost like reset the genre a little bit like really challenged all the movies coming after it like this is what you can do with practical effects let's get yeah. away from very cgi heavy summers right like yep. these ten bowl franchises are often cgi heavy and this this one was like look what we can do absolutely yeah yeah so that was exciting 2010 let's see it was toy story 3 you can't argue with that one that is a fantastic at the end we thought the end of a franchise yeah it did very well but inception came out that summer that was a good i know we too. saw both of those yeah. in theaters why not i think we saw inception more than once because of I course so. we were you in opening night seats yeah. but then we saw it again at the drive-in um and 2009 transformers won but star trek put up a fight yeah, that was a big um, one. It yeah. was a big one, and it was bigger than people anticipated. Yep. You know, people, they weren't really sure, is there a market for this? P are people going to want to see it? Um, and I did not see it. I mean, that's the summer we met, actually. So that's we right. did not, you did not force me to see that. Uh, no, I probably would have already seen it. You know where I saw it? No. At the cottage. That's oh, where I saw it for the first time. I, I think I it. bought you the Blu-ray, and <laughs> we watched it at the cottage when we were here during the winter. Um, and yeah, I was surprised that even I enjoyed it. Yeah, the J.J. Abrams did a good job in rebooting that of both fan service, but also making it much more accessible than the show, mm -hmm. the original show, and then the whatever, the, however many movies they had, they had like probably almost <laughs> ten of them. Mm -hmm. But this, I mean, it really does feel like an action, like it is a, yeah. a, a really good, but like a meaty story too, and exceedingly well cast. I actually oh, think yeah. that that movie is like a standout as just really great cast almost across the board. Yeah, they really found people that reminded you of the old characters, but were doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that same summer was The Hangover, another kind of surprise hit like Bridesmaids. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I think we're starting to find out that there is a market for R-rated comedies, maybe especially in the summers. Um, before, you know, they didn't do well theatrically. Uh, I mean, for a long time, R-rated films are you know they always kind of have a lowered expectation yep. and maybe they'll do better in the rental market but there was an appetite for these and there's always an appetite for a, an actually funny comedy yes we don't which have are, any of those yeah they're, they're more and more rare i think yeah. um so it's nice to see those in a summer too yes it is so 2020 um no movie has yet to be released so that's kind of crazy. Yes, it is. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog, released much earlier this year in North America, just came out in China and vastly underperformed. So China is not going to add to its global numbers, uh, its global box office. Um, but we did just hear that SpongeBob, <laughs> that crazy movie, which we earlier had reported as um, going direct to video. And it was like CBS All Access, which I don't even know what that is. It's not in Canada, I don't. No, um, it's not. But in fact, that is still true for American audiences. You will be waiting until uh, 2021 for that one. But in Canada, SpongeBob is gonna hit theaters in late August. That's so weird. So it is very weird. It is unprecedented. They never untie us like this. Yeah. 
so they are dividing up even the North American box office. You know, we do, like, that does happen overseas. Sometimes North America and even UK get them at different times. Sometimes, like, months later. Yeah. Obviously, China, you know, different markets. Sure. Um, but we've never had no, a split Canada's in always North tied America. To the US. Absolutely. And so now we're looking like, might Tenet try to do the same thing? Like, to try to recoup some of these, you know, the summer losses. Um, but the US is just not ready. Um, and movie theaters are open here um, to a lesser extent that they're not open all the way there's social distancing you're not allowed more than 50 people so it is a risk opening under those conditions but it is a way to get a movie in theaters yes, so it is. Um, yeah this has never been done so in a way Spongebob is going to be our sponge guinea pig <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll see how that goes Okay, looking forward to it. Looking okay. forward to actually so having So SpongeBob movies. could be the summer, the surprise summer <laughs> blockbuster. By default. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.